Welcome to the introductory video on transformations. In this particular video, we're going to review some material from your eighth grade math class, and maybe add just a little bit of new material in there as well. Remember that as you're watching this video, you want to make sure you remove all distractions from the room. Put your cell phone somewhere else, make sure your pets are located elsewhere so that you can focus and pay close attention as I move through the video. If at any point I may say something that does not make sense, you want to make sure to stop the video, rewind, and replay that part of the video. So first of all, what is a transformation? A transformation is going to be something that moves or maps something called a pre-image, and the pre-image is going to be the original or starting figure onto an image, and the image is going to be the new figure. So if I think about this in terms of start and end, the pre-image or the original is going to be where I started from, and the image is going to be where I ended up after the transformation has occurred. So in this particular case, they're showing us the smiley face and they're showing us moving or mapping that smiley face onto a new smiley face. I would consider this my pre-image, my starting or my original figure that's been moved or mapped onto an ending image. So in this picture, the dotted smiley represents the pre-image or the starting place. The image is the solid smiley face, which is where the pre-image ended up as a result of the transformation. Now you probably remember from middle school that when we tr name transformations, we're going to name these using prime notation. So in other words, in this particular slide, A was mapped or slid down onto what I will call A prime. <clears throat> C was mapped or slid onto C prime. And B gets moved or mapped onto what I'm going to call B prime. So this prime notation is quite often used when naming transformations. Now there are an infinite number of transformations that exist out there. We're going to focus on some this year that are kind of old familiar friends from years past. And that's what you see down at the middle of the page. So the types of transformations that we're going to focus on a reflection, which is really just a flip over a particular line, a rotation, which is a turn around some point, and a translation is just a slide that it contains no rotation or reflection. Now because the reflection, the rotation, and the translation all result in images that are the same size as the original figure, these guys are known or called rigid motions. And this whole idea of rigid motion is so important that it has not just one name, but two. So rigid motions are also named or known as isometries. So again, if the image is the same size as the pre-image, we have what's called a rigid motion. The dilation, which you probably remember from middle school, keeps the same shape, but because it changes size, it is not a rigid motion, not an isometry. All right, so as far as a definition for rigid motion or isometry, we say that a transformation is a rigid motion or an isometry if the new image results in, or the new figure results in an object that's the same size as the original. So keeps, preserves, size, length, distance. And you're going to see that word preserves quite a lot in this unit. So preserves just means to keep. So keeps all lengths or distances the same. Now, when we're talking about rigid motions or isometries, there's really two different kinds. The first of which is called a direct isometry. And a direct isometry will either keep or preserve orientation. And again, I use those words keeps and preserves interchangeably. So where a direct isometry keeps 
the orientation the same. An opposite isometry reverses the direction or the order. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means here using the pictures down at the bottom of page two. So if you take a look at the triangles in each of these, the blue represents the original or the pre-image. The red represents the image or where we end up after the transformation has occurred. If we look at that first original triangle ABC and I look at the direction where I look at the orientation in that triangle, as I move around the triangle from vertex to vertex, I go from A to B, from B to C, and then from C back to A. So the direction of my, or the order here, is what I'm going to call counterclockwise. If I go look at what has happened after the transformation has taken place, in moving from A prime to B prime, and then from B prime to C prime, and then lastly from C prime to A prime, it's again counterclockwise. So notice that both of these, both the image and the pre-image, have a counterclockwise orientation or order. What that means is that the orientation has been preserved. And because the orientation has been preserved, because it's the same direction in both, that's what makes this transformation a direct isometry. <clears throat> Let's go take a look at the example of the reflection here. If we look at the original, the pre-image, triangle ABC, and moving from A to B, and B to C, and then C back to A, again, we've got that counterclockwise orientation going on. But then when we go look at the new triangle, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, in moving from A prime to B prime, and B prime to C prime, and then C prime back to A prime, now we've got this clockwise orientation going on. So because in the pre-image we had counterclockwise and that orientation has been reversed or changed, to be clockwise in the image, we say that orientation has not been preserved or orientation has been reversed. And because the orientation has been reversed, that's what makes this transformation an opposite isometry. All right, so there should be some good review from middle school and the different types of transformations that you've seen and done before. My guess is that those vocab words of rigid motion and isometry are probably new vocab words to you. So those are some vocab words that you're going to want to make sure that you pay some attention to. Like always, once you're done with the video, I'm going to have you flip up to the top of page three. And once you flip up to the top of page three, I want you to go ahead and summarize in your own words the most important ideas or takeaways from this video, and then go ahead and see if you can apply what you've learned in the video to questions two and three on page three. Now, if you're having a tough time doing questions two and three, that should be a key indicator to you that you didn't pick up the information that you need to know from the video, so you're going to want to make sure you go and rewatch those portions of the video.